sir. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. We're here tonight because God wants to bless you. And the Lord Jesus Christ has paid everything for what you need. And so since everything is paid, all you need to do is come and collect. Salvation. Come and collect. Righteousness. Redemption. Come and collect. The power to live a victorious life. Come and collect. Healing. Deliverance. Available for everyone. Come and collect. Tonight is a light of blessing upon your life. And as you believe, as you come, everything is paid for. The Lord will bless everyone tonight. Yokes will be broken tonight. Lives will be saved tonight. Deliverances will come to everyone tonight. And your life will never be the same again. And everybody said, Amen. Raise up your hand. Close your eyes. Something good is coming your way. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name tonight. Mighty God. Great God. The Creator God. The God of all blessing. We're coming tonight to receive from you. And we're asking tonight, nobody will be left out. Sinners saved, the sick healed, the oppressed delivered. Great blessing overflowing in every life. We well, thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Already you understand we are here for abundant life. Abundant life through Christ. It's made the provision for everyone. And tonight I come to one aspect of this abundant life. And the top and the topic is the inexhaustible source of abundant life. Inexhaustible. As deep as the ocean. As wide as the sea. Do you understand? All the water that everybody in the world will need. The Lord had provided it at the time of creation. The millions and billions and trillions of people who have lived on the earth. The Lord created the ocean and the sea. All the water we will ever need to drink. Do you understand that for you, for me, for us, for everyone, he had provided all the water we will ever need to drink. Do you understand from the day of creation, all the air we will ever need to breathe have been made available. The oxygen has not been exhausted since that time. And nobody can say, I want to breathe, but cannot breathe because there's no air around me. God is that all sufficient God, all providing God. And the God that makes air, water available for everyone, He has made salvation, healing, deliverance available for everyone. 
the inexhaustible source of abundant life. He said for you tonight, available for you tonight, provided for you tonight. As you come, you collect, you receive, it will be done in your life. Go with me to Psalm 72. And I'm reading here from verse 7. Psalm 72, verse 7. In his days shall the righteous flourish. It's referring to Christ. David looked ahead and he said, He is coming. A Savior is coming. Our Redeemer is coming. The Promise Keeper is coming. And he said, When he comes, when he arrives, in his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endures. Abundance, plenty, sufficient for everyone. It says abundance of peace so long as the moon endures. And then he tells us in verse 8. In verse 8 he says, He shall have dominion also from sea to sea. And from river unto the ends of the earth. Nobody can say, I'm so far away. That's why I cannot have salvation. Unto the ends of the earth. Nobody can say, I'm so far away, that's why I cannot have healing. He provides the healing. He provides the deliverance. He provides the blessing. Unto the ends of the earth. Nobody can say, I cannot come to Jesus because I'm too far away. Jesus available for everyone. The one who paid all our debt. The one who provided salvation for everyone. And the one who provides healing and deliverance and miracles and signs and wonders for everyone. Unto the ends of the earth. Here we are. No matter, doesn't matter how far we are from Jerusalem. Unto the ends of the earth is provided salvation for you. All the nations of the world, all the countries of the world, every community, every tribe in the world, He, Christ, He, the Son of God, He, the Redeemer, He, the Savior, He has provided all that we need unto the ends of the earth. Uh, look at verse 17 there. In verse 17, his name shall endure forever. As mighty as that name was at that time, five or long ago, that name endures and is powerful forever. The name that gives salvation. The name that provides healing. The name that provides miracle. The name that breaks every you. The name that makes the blind to see. The name that works signs and wonders in every life. He says that name shall endure, shall exist, shall be powerful, shall be mighty forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun. As long as, you, as much as you can look up and see the sun, that name will be mighty. As long as you look up 
And as the moon there in the night, that name is mighty. His name shall be continued as long as the sun and men shall be blessed in him anytime every time from that time he was born until he died until he rose again until this very time all men shall be blessed in him Men shall be saved through him. Men shall be delivered through him. And today in Lome Togo, you will be blessed through that name. You'll be healed by that name. Delivered by that name. Any sin that shouldn't be in your life tonight, it will be taken away from your life. Uh, uh, look at the latter part the last part of that sentence there and it says all nations shall call him blessed that is the source of our blessing the source of our salvation the source of our healing the source of our deliverance the source of full redemption for every man in every nation all over the world. The inexhaustible source of abundant life. Abundant life is just today. Eternal life is just today. Everlasting life is just today. Complete deliverance is just today miracle of all kinds is just today signs and wonders for you today because we come to the inexhaustible source of abundant life we're looking at three points here today number one is the faithfulness of the promise keeper the almighty God, the all-sufficient God, the never-failing God that has given us the promise, the promise of salvation, the promise of redemption, the promise of righteousness in every life, the promise of holiness for the people that follow the Lord, the promise of healing, the promise of deliverance, that God has given. He is a promise keeper. He makes the promise. He never forgets. He makes the promise. And every time you come. He fulfills that promise. Number one. The faithfulness of the promise keeper. Number two. I'm coming from heaven. I'm good. I'm now coming to earth. God in heaven. Man on earth. God the faithful one. Man the faithless one. The faithfulness of the promise keeper. Number two, the faithlessness of the problem keepers. What makes people to keep their problem? What makes people to suffer long in their problems? Because they keep their problem through faithlessness. And nobody has any reason to, have to be faithless. One, God created you. To God put you here on earth. Three, God watches over you. You sleep at night, and all that you put on yourself, one goes there, the other one goes there, and God watches over you. And you don't know you sleep, you don't know you wake up, you just wake up.
you're thirsty you drink water you don't know how the water gets to your brain to your body to your nerves to your blood system everywhere and the water is distributed everywhere by a god that is the promise keeper you breathe him and it is not everything you breathe in that you need it's the oxygen in the air you breathe in that makes you survive and every time every time you breathe in god separates the oxygen and it goes to every part of your body and the other part you breathe that out because you don't need that the god that does that for you every minute every moment every day how would you be faithless concerning him the faithlessness of the problem keeper when people are faithless they keep their problem they don't offer the problem unto god they don't give themselves unto god and they remain in their problems you will not be a problem keeper i didn't hear your amen you'll not be a sickness keeper you'll not be an infirmity keeper you'll not be a confusion keeper it's the faithless the faithless that keep their problems but praise the lord i come to point number three the faith and the fruit of the pact keeper you make a pact with the lord you make a, a kind of league of the lord you make a covenant with the lord you say lord i come jesus came for me jesus died for me and he has provided for my salvation he has paid the whole price and i come and then he makes a pact with you an agreement with you a covenant with you and he says whosoever comes to me i really know why he's rejected the faith and the fruit of the pact keeper look at number one I see the faithfulness of the promise keeper. The faithfulness of the promise keeper. Jeremiah chapter 32, I'm reading from verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee think about the whole earth the god who has the power to make to create everything and to make everything perfect everything a little blade of grass when you look at it under the microscope you see the symmetry you see the lines you see everything perfect the god that made the fish to be in the river and the bird cannot be in the river i'm saying the god that has done all things well that same god is the one that says i by my great power 
I, by my stretch out arm, have made the heavens, have made the earth. And then he says, look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved, and be ye healed, and be ye delivered, and be ye liberated. Is the one that makes the promise and he keeps the promise. And tonight when you come to him. Tonight when you link up with him. Tonight when you turn away from sin and you turn to the Savior. Tonight when you give the totality of your heart and your mind and your soul unto the Lord. You will find you will find this promise fulfilled in your life. Salvation for you tonight. Forgiveness for you tonight. Let everybody say amen. Because the God with the promise keeper is the one promising you tonight. And it's never late. The moment you call, that moment he answers you. Tonight he will answer you. I want you to look at Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In Titus chapter 1, verse 2, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began before the world began when does a manufacturer actually get the idea of manufacturing Oh, you say I've not been in the uh, workshop or whatever. Okay, let me change the question. When does a carpenter dream of or have in mind what he's going to make? The carpenter sees a log of wood. It appears shapeless. Appears not worthy useless and then the carpenter he envisions what he will make of that wood he has he has to make that pattern in his mind he has to make that picture before he actually makes the chair or makes the table or makes any furniture The same with the Almighty God. He wanted to create the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars. And he did that in his mind before the world began. He knew the people he would create. He will put them on the earth. He pictures you before you are born. And he said, He will come. She will be born. And before and before you are born, all that you will need when he comes, you'll need water to drink. He provided the water before you came. You will need air to breathe. He prepared that before you came. Now he knows you will need eternal life. And he provided that before you came. He knew you will need the abundant life. Healthy life. Excited life. A life that is a go-getter is going to achieve. He provided that before you came. And 
he promised change. Immediately you are able to recognize, I need that, I need life, I need eternal life, I need abundant life. He said, I know you will say that. I prepared that for you before you came. Come, come and get your own eternal life. Look at that again, Titus chapter 1 verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Life is available for you now. Abundant life available for you now eternal life available for you now amen amen, amen. amen. look at hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 that by two immutable unchangeable things in the which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us everything is just telling us that God is the promise keeper he promised to give you eternal life you are having that eternal life tonight he's promised to give us salvation you are having that salvation tonight he has promised us healing healthy life strong life a life that is able to bear all the bodies you are called upon to bear healing health deliverance he has promised if the promise giver he'll give you tonight the faithfulness of the promise keeper let me come to number two we're not going to spend time on number two why these people that will not reckon with the promise of the promise keeper you don't want to spend time with them the people that don't have faith in god you don't want to spend too much time there the people that keep their problems the healer is there they will not come the savior is there they will not come the deliverer is there they will not come and they are suffering and they don't have the understanding that my problem can be solved now they don't come you, you, you don't want to spend time with them but we're going to talk about them anyhow so that you avoid their past you avoid their way i don't want to keep my problems how about you i don't want to keep any sin how about you talk now are you like me you'll be blessed tonight i don't want to keep any sickness i want to be able to stand i want to be able to walk i want to be able to run i want to be able to think with my brain i don't want to keep any kind of sickness that will destroy my physical life Are you like me? You will be blessed tonight. Because you are not going to be a problem keeper. A sickness keeper. 
you don't want to keep any problem that Christ has come and he says he wants to take it away now he will take all your problems away he will take all those challenges away from your life the faithlessness of the problem keepers look at, look at Isaiah chapter 59 and I'm reading from verse 1 behold the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear it says god is still as mighty as it was in the olden days he said christ is still as mighty as it was in the good old days his hand is not shortened his ear is not heavy he's still saving today he is still hearing prayers today what's the problem then yeah, the problem of the problem keepers look at verse 2 he said but your iniquities have separated you between you and your God let's say two people are together and then there's a separation a separation understand god and man he made us we were together he's a maker he's a redeemer he's the one that wants us to be with him all the time god and man together and it says your iniquities have separated between you and your god and god never moves remains the same way he had remained from the time of creation god is always there he has not moved his love has not moved his mercy has not moved his compassion has not moved he had remained there stable if there is any separation between one and the other and the one has never moved it is man that has moved it's you that have moved the lord remains there any separation has been caused by man your iniquities have separated between you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? The father never moved. The father remained steadfast and stable in that same place of love and compassion. It's the prodigal son that moved that caused the separation and so if there's going to be any reconciliation if there's going to be any togetherness again the father has never moved it's the prodigal son from the far country that will move and come back we are the problems 
we cause the problems for ourselves because we moved away and there is a separation now that life has come now that healing has come now that deliverance has come we are the people to move back to god that's why it says in ezekiel chapter 18 reading from verse 2 30 he said therefore i will judge you O house of israel everyone according to his ways says the lord now he tells us how we can come back to him because he remains steadfast and stable the same way he had ever been and so he says return uh, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin he wants us to turn and come back to him and then in verse 31 verse 31 cast away from you all your transgressions what does that mean somebody was seen well before and then somebody gave him some water that water had been contaminated and he used it, that water every day to wash his face and some of the contaminated water will get into his eyes and the eyes are getting deep and the eyes are near blind and he keeps on washing with that same contaminated water since i don't understand i can't see well anymore i'm almost blind and then the person that wants to help you so that your eyesight will be clear he says my brother my sister there i will treat you but you must stop washing your face every morning with that contaminated water he said cast it away from you that's the sin that is causing the blindness and whatever medication you are given good medication you have the medication and you wash the eyes again with the contaminated water the eyes will go blind but to cast that contaminated water away from you and then you come for your 2020 vision that, that's what god is saying cast away from you all your transgressions whereby he have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Look at verse 32. In verse 32, for I have no pleasure, no delight, no joy in the death of him that dies, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and leave ye. As you obey the Lord tonight, forgiveness will come to you completely. And healing will come to you completely. Eternal life, abundant life will be your portion tonight in Jesus' name. Amen in your life. Amen in your life tonight is the night of your salvation and healing now let's look at number three now 
We're going to make a pact with the Creator. With Christ our Redeemer. Uh, you know, let me illustrate this to you. You've always been sick and sick and sick. And uh, you say, I don't know what to do again. I get well now. Then I become sick. I get happy now. Then I become sad. I'm provided for now. And then I'm in want, I'm in need. And then uh, somebody says, I'm going uh, to be your adopted father. He has not been your father. But he has been looking at you suffering up and down. You see, there are adopted children. There are adopted parents. God now says, I'll take care of you. Everything that is wrong in your life, I will fix it up. I say, but I'm a stranger to you. Actually, I'm your creator. It's your sin that has made you gone far away and you become a stranger to me. He said, now I will be your father. I will forgive your sin. I will set you free. I will heal your sicknesses. I'll deliver you from every yoke in your life. You say that is very good. You say, what do I have to do? It says, make an agreement with me. That's what, that's what we call a pact. Make an agreement with me. And then come to me. I gave my only begotten son for your salvation. Receive him. Accept him. Believe him. And then once that is done. The deed is sealed. You become a child of God. You have the salvation of God. You have the daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, lifetime care from God. That is the pack. That is the agreement. And as you come, already I said, you'll not cast anyone away. And then salvation has come. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. And anything you need now, you know that your father cares for you. And you know that Jesus has paid for everything. And what do you do? To begin this agreement. Look at Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 22. And of times it has cast him into the fire. And, and into the waters. To destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Have compassion on us and help us. The man I'm reading about here did not know about the part. It's like an hungry man. He has nothing to eat. He's very poor. And he's begging for just breakfast. For one day, the person he's talking to is willing to give him breakfast and lunch and dinner, supper, and the following day, and the following week, and the following year, all through his life. He 
If you can do anything, it's talking to the one who can do everything. And he's asking for one help. But Jesus will not only give you help tonight, all the rest of your life, he'll keep on helping you. You miss a great amen there. Look at verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, not only this one thing will be done, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now from today, the Lord will carry you all the rest of your life in Jesus' name. Not just tonight's problem. Not just tonight's predicament. Not just tonight's difficulties. All your life all your life if you can only come and believe in him all, all things salvation all things healing all things deliverance all things provision all things joy and happiness all things miracle all things signs and wonders if you can only believe all things are possible to him that believes you see how simple that is he didn't tell you to go and bring millions of your savings he didn't tell you to go and get a degree in philosophy he just said i tell you something i am your savior say you believe i say i believe that's all for salvation that's all for your healing that's all he didn't tell you to do something difficult he said you're looking at jesus the savior that never told a lie to anybody on earth you believe i believe that's all strangers came he healed them the woman with issue of blood came she was healed lazarus was dead and was only one sentence declaration lazarus came back from death he himself said i will die for the sins of humanity the disciples were looking here and there did you hear did you hear he said it again i will sacrifice for the sins of humanity and then according to his word he never lied he was killed he died on the cross he was buried on the third day even the grave could not prove him a liar the stone they put on his grave they could not prove him a liar the seal they put on the stone could not prove him a liar all those soldiers standing guard that he will not rise nobody could prove him a liar on the third day the power of God came from heaven rolled away the stone and Jesus came out alive and he appeared to his own disciples 
He said, Thomas, come on here. Look at my hand. Look at my side. As he said, so it happened. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, because you see, you believe. Blessed are the people in Lume. Blessed are the people in Africa. Blessed are the people all over the world who have not seen me physically. And yet, they have believed. That is what we do. Believe only. He is my savior. Nothing will take that from your mouth. Nothing will take that from your heart. He is my savior. He is my healer. If thou canst only believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. Somebody there is believing tonight. Somebody there is believing tonight. Salvation from heaven will come upon you. Healing from on high will come upon you. Miracle will come upon you tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. Your time of salvation has now come. And it's very simple. Just say, I believe Christ who paid the whole price for my salvation. He is my Savior. I believe. And as you believe, eternal life, forgiveness, freedom, redemption will come to you now. It's bowed and eyes closed. The people that are saying, now I understand and I believe that Jesus died for me. I don't need to pay any other thing again. Only believe. As you turn away from your sin. And tonight, if that is your declaration. I believe. I believe. I believe. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Praise the Lord. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Jesus died for me. Jesus paid the whole price. And I believe. I believe. Raise up that hand. Wonderful. Salvation has come to you. The Savior is going to be your Savior right now. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. You are raising up your hand. You say, yes, I believe Jesus is my Savior. Wherever you are, stand up now. Here, in front of me, stand up there. In any other country, where we are gathered together, you have raised up your hand. I believe, I believe, I believe. You stand up on your feet right now. In any country, any congregation you are, or you are by yourself, you are watching the program. Salvation has come. The Savior presents himself to you. I believe. Stand up, I'm praying for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because we are God of love. A God of mercy, a God of compassion. You have provided salvation through Christ for everyone. I'm asking, Lord, everyone raising their hand, everyone standing up, everyone believing on the Lord tonight. 
grant them that salvation in Jesus name let the spirit of God bear witness in their hearts now they are saved let there be the accompanying transformation of life new life eternal life let that be evident in their lives right now in jesus name i pray O oh lord that the grace to live a life of salvation everyone now will receive in jesus name We thank you Lord because we know it is done you have saved all that come and have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus name we pray amen in every life our counselors will go around and you help us do this necessary thing take their names take their particulars we are rejoicing with them because now they are saved our moderating overseer will come and lead us now As you are standing, keep on standing so that counselors can come to you and attend to you and have all your addresses so that we can see you through and help you. Please, counselors, help our brethren that are standing. Move forward in front, at the left, at the right, at the back. Let's hurry up. If you are watching through television online, you see there's a link below the screen. Please click and you can fill the slip so that we can help you. On the screen below the screen, there's a WhatsApp number. For those of you on over the radio, this is the number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Once again, plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three
conseiller et au lieu d'acquittement, mettez les noms, prénoms, numéros de téléphone, lieu d'habitation, au nom précis à au numéro réel. Là, on pourra contacter pour toutes les aides. Please, counselors, move quickly. Let them put the, the full address, the name, the place, their phone numbers. For the rest of us, please don't move here and there. Pastor is coming back for prayer. So let's stay in the mood of prayer. If you are done, just wave your hand and let us see why you are still waiting for prayer. For those of you watching online or television, there is a link below the screen. Please click and you can fill the form so that we can be able to help you. To get in touch with us, you can contact us through this number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Please, counselor, if you are done, just wave your hand and signify to us. At the right hand, have you finished? Just wave your hand. In the midst, far back, at my left. Let's move on quickly. We are still waiting for counselors. Please hurry up. Yeah. 
We want to seize this opportunity and remind those of you that have given their, your life to Jesus yesterday and today, there, there's going to be convert banquets here in the village, in Chinese village, uh, tomo tomorrow at 3 p.m. For those of you who gave your life in the various regions and countries, there's going to be a convert banquet on Sunday, 26th of February, in your various churches. We want to remind to every one of us that tomorrow we are going to have our global Sunday worship here from, from 6.30 a.m. From 6.30 GMT. And in the evening, GSK Crusade will continue. We are waiting for the counselors. If you are done, please wave your hand. Far back, I'm still seeing people standing. Please, let's hurry up. At my left, I still see some counselors with sleep. If you are done, just wave your hand. Now, stay next to the sick people and know that the hour of miracle has arrived. As As our pastor is getting ready to come up, I want everybody to rise up and welcome the hour of miracles. Praise the Lord. You are too quiet, I said, praise the Lord. Remember, your healing has been promised by the Lord. Paid for by the Lord. Provided by the Lord. He did that and provided before you came. He will open your blind eyes. To the Lord, dear man. He will make you rise up and walk. Miracle coming your way. Healing coming your way. When you hear the final Amen, it is done. Where are you? Miracle is looking for you. Where are you? Healing is looking for you. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the problem. Father, in Jesus' name. A God of love, a God of power, you provided healing a long, long time for us. And today we make the connection with your healing power. Heal everyone in Jesus' name. Any pain, any disease. 
touch them now. Heal them in Jesus' name. That swelling there, come out in Jesus' name. Blind eyes, be opened and begin to see in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, your ears open, your tongue loose, speak out and hear. Any swelling, any part of the body, heal them now. Touch them now. Remove that now. Those who are lame, rise up and walk in the power and the strength of the Lord. Blind people, open your eyes and see in Jesus' name. Every sickness. I bring that sickness before the Lord. Lord Jesus, that's what, what you paid for. By your stripes we are healed. To the right, to the left, to the center, to the back, everywhere. Let healing take place right now. Over the radio, over television, and all those online, your healing is given to you now by Jesus Christ. Everywhere, testimony in front of me here, testimony over there to the right, testimony over there to the left, testimony for young and old, everyone. The Lord has done it. You are healed, you are delivered. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. Amen. Check yourself. Your miracle is now there with you.